I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I want to welcome you to this Cisco training video where we're going to take a look at the similarities and differences between the routing information protocol versions 1 and 2. And, you know, when you start studying for your Cisco certification exams and you're dealing with all these protocols you've got to learn and then static routing on top of that, it's enough of a different world to begin with but you're also presented with differences and similarities between two versions of RIP. And to be blunt, in the real world, you're going to see RIP version 2 much more often than you're going to see version 1. But I've bumped into it occasionally over the years out in the field in smaller networks. So not only for your CCNA and CSENT and your CCNP exams do you need to know the differences and similarities between the two, but it does come in handy in the real world as well. Some similarities between the two versions both of them use the Bellman Ford algorithm. Both are configured with the command router rip. And both of them send routing updates at fixed times. And that can be a problem with rip overall. And it's why you don't see rip really run over a lot of WANs very often. Because what we want when it comes to a routing protocol over the WAN is a protocol that's only going to generate routing updates when there has actually been a change in the network. RIP is going to send out a routing update no matter what at a fixed interval. And we can change that interval but we have to be careful about that too of course but that is one drawback to RIP is that it's going to send out routing updates even if there's really nothing to update if nothing has changed. Also both have a maximum hop count of 15 because when you see the hop count hit 16 in RIP, that's considered an unreachable route. Also, while we're here, that's another drawback to RIP, especially over a wide area network, is that it only uses one metric, hop count. And that's it. It's really, you know, how many hippity hops, if you will, is it from point A to point B? It's not taking into consideration, oh, you know, this is a 56K line or this is a T1 or an E1 line. It's all just hops to rip. And again, as you get into your more advanced studies, you can see ways to fine tune rip, but we would rather run a routing protocol over a wide area network that has a little more knowledge about what speed our links are running at rather than just counting hops. Three major differences and the first two here are the ones that really make the difference for us when it comes to RIP. RIP version 2 is going to use multicasting to send those routing updates out rather than a broadcast. And RIP version 2 multicasts to 224.009. RIP version 2 also supports VLSM where RIP version 1 does not. And RIP version 2 also supports MD5 authentication for routing updates. I wouldn't throw away my firewalls or anything like that uh, just because we have this authentication available. It's not something you see terribly often in production networks, but you do see it. So again, three major differences here or benefits to RIP version 2 is that RIP version 2 is going to use a multicast rather than a broadcast. It's going to use or it supports VLSM where RIP version 1 does not. And we do have that routing update authentication available for RIP version 2 as well. Another important similarity I want to mention to you here, and especially for those of you who are working with home labs or perhaps Dynamips to study for your certification exams, both versions can be verified and debugged. You verify this command or this protocol with show IP protocols. You get a lot of good basic information on RIP. Uh, especially some interesting defaults as far as the timers and the versions that are sent and accepted. I'm going to cover those in another video, but you really should be familiar with the output of that command because when you start troubleshooting routing at a production site, show IP protocol should really be the first command that you run. Also, debug IP RIP, you really want to get into debugs when you're working in home labs. You should never run them on a production network unless you know what the result's going to be because they can result in a lot of additional traffic and actually overwhelm a router. So you don't want to run debugs just for fun out in production networks, but in home labs, I strongly recommend them. So I would be familiar with the output of both of these commands when it comes to RIP for both your certification exams and the real world as well. Also, for your certification exam prep, if you're watching this on YouTube or whether you're watching it on my website, I also have a video quiz for RIP. So you might want to take a look at that and just brush up on your skills there as well. 
I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933. I want to thank you for watching the video. I invite you to come out to the BryantAdvantage.com. Over 250 free Cisco tutorials, videos, practice exams, daily questions on the blog, all kinds of great stuff out there. So again, thanks for taking time to watch the video, and I'll see you at the website.